In the past, when we've been dealing with logarithmic expressions, we've been able to make sure that uh, these guys have common bases. So whatever the base is here, can we raise it to a power to get that? If it's not direct, then we can create an exponential equation and work it out that way. But what if these guys have nothing in common? Well, this is where the change of base theorem comes in. This is one of the best, coolest things I've ever seen. What this allows us to do is that we can rewrite this as a quotient of two different logs. We can say log base C of B over log base C of A. So as long as you pick the same base, you can create this. So whatever's inside the log goes in the numerator, and whatever's the base goes in the bottom of that quotient. Now typically, we can write it like this. We can use common logs, and we can say um, log base B over, not log base B, log of B over log of A. Uh, that's the same thing as saying the natural log of B over the natural log of A. I mean, it's, you may not think that it's cool, but let me show you how we get to use something like this. If I ask you to uh, round to the nearest thousandth, round to the nearest thousandth, uh, for example, this guy, I want you to find log base 21 of 49. Now, if these had the same base, or could be written as the same base, this would be super easy. But we can't write these with the same base. And this is 7 squared, but that's 7 times 3, and it's not, it's not going to do us any good. But what we can do is that we can rewrite this. And I can say, as long as I can evaluate log of 49 over log of 21 as this direct application of the change of base theorem, I'm going to be okay. And so we can type this into our calculator and come up with our approximation rounded to the nearest thousandth. Alright, so notice I used common log. The change of base theorem says you could use common log for both or natural log for both. So I want you to see that it doesn't really matter which one we use. What does matter is that you use parentheses correctly. So, when you type in log, notice how it automatically opens up parentheses for you. So when I type 49, I've got to make sure that I close that. If you have a, if you've struggled with parentheses, here's what I suggest. You know log opens up parentheses, so let's make sure that you close them whenever you write it like this. And do the same thing down here. You know that this is going to be opening parentheses, so make sure that you close that. So log of 49 divided by log of 21, close parentheses. And I get this value. Now I said it didn't matter if you used common log or natural log, so let's make sure that I'm not a liar, right? If I do the natural log of 49, close parentheses, divided by natural log of 21, you see that I get the exact same value. It doesn't matter which way I do it. What you can't do is that you can't say one is log and one is natural log. They have to both be log or both be natural log. So my approximation rounded to the nearest thousandth is 1.278. And what we're saying here is that if I were to take 21 and raise it to the 1.278 power. It, it, it's not going to be exactly equal to 49, but it's going to be close. And the reason it's not going to be exact is because we rounded, right? So let's try another example. If I have log base 5 of 256. My base here is 5, and there's no power of 5 that gives me 256 exactly. So we're going to need to do a change of base theorem again. So whether you want to say log or natural log is up to you. What you need to understand is that the base 
of your original logarithm is what goes in the bottom. The base goes in the bottom. And the 256, it goes up top. So you could say it this way, or you could use natural log just like we were showing earlier. So I could say natural log of 256 over the natural log of 5. Either way you say it, it's going to be perfectly fine. All right, so let's see. We've got log of 256, close parentheses. I cannot stress that enough to pay attention to your parentheses. Divided by log of 5. So we get 3.445. So 3.445. So let me check this real quick just to see if I'm on the right track. The answer to the log is supposed to be the power. So I'm saying this is the power of 5 that's going to give me that. So if I do 5 raised to 3.445, do I get something close to 256? Yeah, rounding to the nearest whole number, that's 256. Now look what happens if you don't use your parentheses correctly. If I do log of 256 divided by log of 5, maybe you're going too fast and you're not paying attention, you get this, 2.564. All right? So if I do 5 raised to the 2.564, that's not even close. Right? It is not even close to the 256, so you should know you did something wrong. So always make sure you take the time to check your work. All right. One last example, and then we're going to get to some fun stuff. Let's do log base 2 of 0 0.03. All right, well, just like we've done before, 2 to a power is not going to give you 0 0.03, at least not nicely, so we're going to do the change of base theorem. Let's use common log. Again, you can use natural log, it doesn't matter. The base goes in the bottom. The number up top goes in the top, like this. So let's go to the calculator and see what we come up with. And then we're going to check it to make sure that our answer is feasible. All right. So we've got log of 0 0.03, close those parentheses, divided by log of 2. Make sure these both say log, or make sure they both say natural log. And you see we get the same answer no matter what. Round to the nearest thousandth, so that's 0 0.05, that's 8, but the 8 is bigger than 5, so I need to round up. So I get negative 5, 0 0.05, 9, like that. And like we were talking before, check your work. If I do 2 raised to the negative 5.059, I should get something that's close enough to 0 0.03. Yeah, it's really close to 0 0.03. So I feel really good about my work. All right, now what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to see how we can use the change of base theorem to help us simplify and evaluate some logarithms that might have been more difficult in the past.